Hello and welcome to a new video. The last three weeks has been quite challenging here on the farm. A big storm had hit Portugal again, especially over the central Portugal region and brought two weeks of near solid rain. It was pretty intense. This was the third week that has just passed and finally there was a bit more of a break in the rain, enough so that we could actually start with the roof. I'm so excited to show you guys what's happened. As I mentioned, it's been super, super challenging on the farm. There was so much rain that eventually I decided to pack myself and the dogs up. We had to get off the farm because water was literally gushing in everywhere. There was water coming through the floor. The water was damming up outside because the boulders were in the way of water extraction. And um, oh my gosh, it was just too much. So I needed to get somewhere. We booked into an Airbnb for two nights just to get warm and dry <laughs> a little bit and a little bit of comfort as well. It was a lot, it was a lot, but this week has finally, as I mentioned, brought some relief, some really positive news. As I mentioned, the roof has gone up, um, or for the most part gone up, and I'm excited that it's brought it to a point where actually it won't hinder us from moving forward with works and hopefully things will move a lot faster. I'm quite excited to show you guys what has happened. So let me show you what's happened on the farm in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely drenched. I cannot stay ahead of the water at all. Everywhere. It's just flooded. Hello and welcome. I'm Christine, an expat originally from South Africa. I moved to Portugal in October of 21. This is my adventure as a solo expat on a farm in central Portugal with my two fur kids, Shakti and Shiva. I've never earned or lived on a farm, but I moved to Portugal in the hope of fulfilling a lifelong dream in finding an open space, subsistence farming, and a safer, better life. Now that we have found our farm, the second stage of our journey begins. I have to figure out farm life while renovating an agricultural structure to make it habitable and turn it into a comfortable home for me and my fur kids. Follow along our journey. This is Girl Mates Farm. week four which is technically again actually day two because today is tuesday today the guys actually couldn't do too much because we're waiting we're kind of in between materials and in between bad weather there is rain predicted again for the next two weeks more or less so i'm not sure how much we're going to be doing over the next two weeks so today they did what they could they blocked up this wall a little bit further and met the height on the side with the wall at the back. Nice. And then cut up, or I should rather say um, rendered the window area to prepare it to fit the window. Can you see out there, boy? So that can dry. The top still needs to be done. But we have time. And also they cut the doorway. They cut it more straight. Some still to go here with the, all these rocks. Just to be... Actually, maybe this one is staying. Maybe it has to come out to here. Um, so they started preparing the doorway as well to be a little more even and they added in some render on this side to just straighten it all out and then of course it will get more render to block that out so the door will fit but we can't fit anything we can't well we could probably fit the window but we can't fit the door yet because we still have to do a whole compound over the floor to match this side, this new side, to the old side and there is a slight difference in levels 
not sure if you guys can see this on camera but there is a slope that goes downwards and this way so we have to put a compound on the complete floor to even it out and straighten it out as well before we can do anything else really and that's what we did today Whilst there was a break in the weather, I decided to clean up the old window that we're going to reuse in the new bedroom space. I pulled off all the old things that were stuck on the window, I sanded it down, washed it down and then put a first coat of primer on the window to get it ready to put the final coat of paint on once this is actually fitted in the space. Day two, week four, and although a storm broke out today and it was raining quite heavily and everything is underwater, one of the team did show up to try and finish the walls of the doorway. And he built himself this little shelter so he could keep working in the rain. Thank goodness he was here because the water came pouring through this doorway. So we had to make a little makeshift. Uh, my cat is also soaking wet. We had to make a little makeshift sluice for the water so that it could keep running out and not run through my door. Although I'm hoping that doesn't flow back into the house. Careful there, boy. And I added additional plastic, more bricks, more everything to try and keep the water out because I was just throwing out buckets and buckets of water every five minutes. It was quite a lot. Why are you so miserable? And it's about to start raining again, so let's head inside. <laughs> that evening got pretty bad and the water just kept coming and coming. I tried to sweep the water out of the sluice continuously to keep it from flooding into the house. Eventually I had to cut more of the concrete up to try and make a bigger gap for the water to run out, but I eventually hit granite and I couldn't cut up any more of the area for the water to come out. It was pretty much at this point where I decided I couldn't anymore and I decided to check into an Airbnb the next day. Okay, go inside. Our stay for the next couple of days while we seek. Some dryness and warmth <laughs> from the rains. How cute is this? Open plan kitchen. It's a little A-frame house, but not little by any stretch of their imaginations. Great little kitchen, dining area, open plan lounge to TV. Upstairs is a second bedroom and a half a bathroom, a toilet and a, basically a toilet and a basin. And downstairs, there's a primary bedroom that's a really nice size let me just put the lights and a little bathroom that's also not so little actually with a, oh good boy with a nice size shower and working toilet i'm always excited for indoor plumbing guys i really really am and uh in this door there's not much it's just a storeroom Oh, I think I put the light off. Yeah, just a storeroom, but it's got a washing machine. So that's always welcome. And a really nice size geezer for a hot water boiler. It's 
So yeah. Oh, and I forgot to show you, almost. He left me, I'm staying at this Kenta, Valdez Gingera, and he's actually left me a bottle of his estate wine and some treats because he thought I might be peckish when I checked in. So that is super, super cute. Link in description if you guys want to stay here. This is in Piraboa, just south of Covilia, or very close to Covilia, like a 10 minute drive from Covilia. Really, really pretty, fully enclosed space, huge backyard, and of course, pet friendly. Good morning. It's been a while. Today is, or this week, is the sixth week of the renovation on my farm here in central Portugal. For two weeks, the builders weren't able to do anything because we had rain for two weeks solid. There was a day per week, possibly, where it rained little enough that they could come in to the build site. But all they could do was finish the rendering of the doorway, which looks really pretty, but and it needed to be done, but they couldn't do more than that. So today is Wednesday. It is week six, six of the project. And finally, we have a day without rain. It might be overcast, but it's going to give us just enough time to get the roof up. The wood arrived late last night again. Behind me is actually the center beam for the whole roof. <laughs> It's huge! And the rest of the wood is on this side over here. All the beams. And we've had the tiles for a while. So I'm really excited. With a roof up, it means that the space will be protected so they can work rain or shine. I had a bit of a curveball this week though because I've always been concerned about the size of my bathroom. I knew that there was some regulation but I thought I fit within the regulation that it only had to be 1.5, a minimum of 1.5 meters wide. But then with a lot of research and a lot of sleuthing, this information was really not hard. I mean, this information was really not easy to come by. I eventually found the regulation and what it says is that for T0s, T1s and T2s, T's indicate number of bedrooms. So T1 would be a one bedroom, T2 would be a two bedroom, T0 would be a studio. For T0 through T2, one needs one minimum bathroom that occupies 3.5 meters squared of space. Now, my bathroom is two by 1.5. So unfortunately, that means that it comes to three square meters of space. So I fall just short. This means, you guessed it, they're gonna have to tear down that wall and rebuild it. Now, unfortunately, my architect has not been able to confirm this. I'm not sure why he is playing a little coy at the moment, not really giving me much information. I'm not sure if that's because our project hasn't officially started, but I have paid a deposit, so I thought he would have given me this information by now. So that's a little bit tricky. I think if one is going to be employing an architect, be upfront, ask straightforward questions, like for example, what is the minimum size that my bathroom can be for the amount of bedrooms that I have or anything else that you need to know beforehand. Maybe they tell you that because they certainly aren't volunteering the information or at least my architect didn't volunteer the information. Anyway, it's pretty early. The clock's just changed on the 1st of November. It is now 7.30. So usually the team was here around about this time. We have enough light, so I'm hoping that they're going to arrive relatively soon so that we can start getting that roof up. 
I'll take you through the process as they proceed for this day. Tomorrow we've got rain again, so I'm hoping they put in a good day of work today and get that roof up. After I remeasured the wall of the bathroom, I had actually forgotten that I'd asked them to increase that wall. So I do qualify for the bathroom size because the new dimensions are 2.5 by 1.5, which gives us a total square meter space of 3.75. So I do make the regulation. The first thing we had to do was take up the remaining old piece of the old beam that was in the roof so that we could lay the yeah, new center cool. beam. You want to get on the other side? Yeah, yeah, I'll go on the other side. Yeah, right up. Take two. Oh, it's quite tight. How much you got, Matt? Uh, about four foot. Do you want me to go up? Go down, mate. Go down. So we'll, we'll go up under this wall here. Go get on that hand in. We can go a bit further to the... Yeah, yeah. Full right. We can. Uh, we're going to end up in the same situation. Yeah, true. Can we fill it up onto the wall? Yeah. Up to the, up to the, to the waist there, up to the, yeah. <laughs> right, again. One, two, three. One, two, three. A little bit more. One, two, three. Double. Okay. I'll go up there. <coughs> so, uh, just steady it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Use them all. Come a little bit more forward. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Okay. Good. Yep. Careful with that, but they're like, I'm just gonna drop this in, okay? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. We'll go in the middle of it. <laughs> nope. One, two, three. One, two, three. Right, on three. One, two, three. Yeah. It's in. Get a bit more. Tight to the back. Yeah, yeah. One, two, three. Yeah. Lovely. Wow. 
Right. With the center beam positioned, they could move on to working on the side beams and trying to get the perfect fit. From the first beam, what they would do is create a template to cut the rest of the beam so the process will go a lot faster. The first one took quite a long time to get the perfect fit, but after that it really was smooth sailing. It was a few series of measure, cut, repeat, until that perfect fit was found for the beam. End of week six, day one, and we have a full roof structure. Isn't that amazing? It already kind of feels like a roof. This is actually going to be quite a big space. What's remaining here is four meters by 4.8 meters. So whether I do do the divide into some kind of second room office or leave it open, which I probably will do for the time being, this is going to be one epic bedroom. There was some rain between the two days, but the next day the guys came, it was Friday, and they tried to push hard to get the rest of the roof up. It was really interesting to see how the roof actually goes up. So first, the plasterboard goes up, then the insulation goes on top of the plasterboard. On top of the insulation goes the wood rippers on top of that the tyvek gets laid down on top of the tyvek there are steel rippers or beams that goes on and on top of the steel eventually will be the tiles as it was the end of day on friday and we couldn't quite get to the tiles as that will require another full day of work. They put a plastic sheet over the whole roof for me because on Monday we are geared to get more rain again for two to three days. So just to appease me, they've put an, a piece of plastic on so that it doesn't get too wet. Although the Tyvek is watertight, so technically there shouldn't be any water coming through. End of day two, week six, and the roof is so nearly done. We just have to put the tiles on. The plasterboard is on the inside. On top of that, we've got insulation. On top of the insulation, we have more rippers. On top of that, we've got the Tyvek. On top of the Tyvek, we have more silver beams of some kind to keep that down. And those silver beams are what the tiles are gonna go on 
eventually unfortunately we couldn't get to or they couldn't get to everything today but it's a really good progress and just because there's more rain coming our way there's now a plastic sheet on top of everything just for my peace of mind so that the rain doesn't come through here the Tyvek is waterproof so it should keep the rain at bay but we can only do the tiling once we've got a day of no rain or clear skies and that is only going to be next week so it is what it is but look how it's coming together and once we have the roof on and in fact already now they can the team can continue working here inside on the inside render out all of these walls complete all of these cut them all down a little bit further back so that it doesn't jut out too much but we're going to keep these beautiful feature walls and everything else is going to get rendered On top of this wall, I am because that is the bathroom in there, I'm planning to put glass bricks this way and that way so that we can get some natural light in there. Because at the moment, the space, there's obviously no window here and I cannot add a window because that road faces a Camino road. And whenever it faces that, we can't actually put any windows facing that way, unfortunately. So we're going to put those beautiful glass blocks at the top to bring in natural light. And I'm just going to flood this place with additional light so that it's not too dark of a space. Wanted to keep the beautiful high ceilings to make it a feature in the bathroom. So I think that could be quite pretty. We'll see what that looks like when it's a finished product. This still needs to come down. But yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there. We are making some beautiful progress here. Looking forward to seeing what next week brings on the inside and also the tiles on the roof. Excited for that. So catch you next week.